Welcome everyone to today's Book Widgets webinar using Book Widgets in primary education. I'm Kate from Book Widgets and joining me today is my colleague Cheryl. She'll be monitoring the chat and keeping an eye out for any questions you may have. So excited to have you all here with us today. For those of you who are new, Book Widgets is a content creation and evaluation tool for teachers that will support your students learning process from beginning to end. We have a widget library with over 40 template or activity types, as well as 35 plus question types. And we have integration with various learning management systems so that you can monitor your student progress and provide them feedback as well as check up on all their grades with our reporting dashboard so you can get some insightful learning statistics and be able to know what next steps uh, you can take to personalize the learning for your students and to uh, integrate with all that you're doing in your activities. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. So. For today's webinar, we are gonna take a look at some specific content related examples that are for primary or as we call it in the States, elementary education classrooms. So you're also gonna get some general tips for how to share widget activities as well. So we're gonna start off with some widget examples for inspiration. I'm going to show you some of the different options for customizing inside of book widgets. And we're going to share take a look at how to share widget activities with students as well as provide you with some useful resources to keep learning. Let's get started. So we have uh, quite a number of different examples for inspiration. So we're going to be taking a look and sharing at uh, examples for languages. So if you are learning English or any other world language, um, we have activities that will support that type of learning, in addition to math, science, history, art, music, projects, and some exit tickets to finish out the learning time that you're doing with your students. So let's kick it off first with some language widgets. So we can think about how we're using this in terms of skills like listening, writing, speaking, so we have quite a few different examples. So this first one I want to show you is made in a split worksheet where you will be able to see that we have on one side is uh, an embedded uh, podcast and then we have guiding questions on the other side. So if, it, if the colors for this particular widget didn't catch your attention, I'm sure the topic certainly did. But you can see how this lesson is organized, that we have lots of questions um, on the one side here that students can type in their answers, they can select, all to show that they are demonstrating their understanding. So remember, we have those 35 different question types. And in this split worksheet, you can see them being put to use. Now, one of the great things I love about split worksheets is that real simple, you can always change the view by sliding things over. So if you want to make those questions really much bigger for your students or smaller accordingly, you can do that. So lots of great examples here to check out. Let's go pop back to some other ones. So here we have a split whiteboard that we're going to take a look at next. This one I love too because, and I'm just going to say it right now, I probably love all of the widgets I'm going to show you. We have quite an array of examples. So for this one, we have where you have the directions are here as an audio file. So for your students who may not be proficient readers, being able to embed an audio file is a fantastic accommodation for them for any age. And then they can use the drawing tools on the side and even change colors to be able to play 
with the widget and navigate through after they listen to the directions. So it's a lot of fun with this particular widget. All right, let's take a look at some other ones. So again, these are all for inspiration that I want you to think about how what I'm showing you with these different widgets that you'll be able to use them with your own students, um, whether it's this lesson or using this type of widget. Here we have a video quiz widget. And this one is using the song, I'm not going to sing it because we don't want it in our heads, but we have uh, Frozen's Let It Go. And what's great about this one is as students play and watch the video, when you get to the question point, it's asking them to complete the sentence uh, and fill in the missing lyrics. So this is a great way to practice auditory processing and to some typing skills uh, to build their language capacity. All right, here we have a note card widget to take a look at. This one um, also is blending the auditory and um, reading capacity with them. So here we have the note card, press the speaker icon to listen. So you'll be able to hear the sound. A uh, boy. And then as you flip the card over, you can support their learning with that visual element. And let me just get back into full screen. And hold on a second, sorry about that. All right, so note cards, so being able to build in that auditory and visual component. And who doesn't love bingo? Here we have the bingo widget where the teacher will read aloud a story. And then when they hear the word being said, then on their bingo card, they will click that they've heard the word and then you've seen that the color changes. So this is a great way again to build that listening skill uh, in a way that's really activating the ears for this one. And then we have to finish out our listening category here, we have a jigsaw puzzle. So this one, I really, really like this one. Now I got a head start so that we could take a look at this. I solved most of the puzzle for us, but we can work on those fine motor skills of dragging and dropping the puzzle pieces in. And then this Hi, is pretty cool. My name is Murasaki Shikibu. Probably many of your English classes feature lots of novels by male writers from Twain to Dickens to Hemingway. But their craft may not even have existed if I hadn't been there before. I'm a Japanese woman and I'm considered to be the world's first novelist. Now, I love this particular widget. Why? Because here you have something that you've solved the puzzle and then you're rewarded with an auditory message. And so now the students can learn more about whatever the topic of the puzzle was. In this case, it is about the very first novelist. So um, this one, I, I love this one because it's just so creative with being able to you know, build that sense of uh, reward in for solving the puzzle, but it's so simple to do and create. All right, let's go take a look at some more of our widgets. So we have uh, taking a look at some writing skills. How can we build their capacity and their skill set for writing in the elementary or primary classroom? For this one, we have a worksheet that has some various question types where it asks uh, the students to drag and drop the words into the placement of the sentence. And then students are getting immediate feedback on whether or not the word placement is correct or not. And if it's incorrect, oh, I can see, I didn't get my green check mark, so I know it's wrong. Let me move it to the next one. Ah, there it is. So creating that feedback loop is really helpful. 
We also see, you know, a mark sentence question type here. So being able to click and get that immediate feedback. Oh, I didn't get my check mark, so I know that's not it. Didn't get my check mark. Ah, there it is. So here you can also see in this particular one, we have um, solving the puzzle. So we have that crossword puzzle question type. So not only is its own widget, but you could uh, embed a widget inside of a widget. So that's what we're seeing here where you have your jigsaw puzzle that you can solve um, as part of the widget activity. All right, I hope you're getting some great ideas. Would love to see them in the chat, any of them that you'd like to share. This particular widget is a, also a split whiteboard with, let's go take a look. This was made by one of our fantastic uh, in, book widget users and what's really interesting about this particular split whiteboard you have a video on the side that students can play so you're modeling for them through the video and then now the practice using the whiteboard tools on the other side they can practice what they just saw using a stylus or using a trackpad using their mouse that they can now practice their handwriting skills while also on a digital device huh. pretty cool all right here we're going to take a look at another split whiteboard this one's a lot of fun because it has embedded in it the random widget. So on the one side, we're going to spin with our randomness wheels, and then we need to write a creative story about an octopus who's painting while skiing. That could be pretty fun. So we have a number of uh, question types over here on the side, fill in the blanks, and we also have um, a rich text question where students can again spin to create a creative story. Let's take a look at a whiteboard widget. This one is also great too for any grade level where you're asking your students to draw a comic book based on the story that they've read. So we're doing a little bit of not just writing, but also some visual design here where they can uh, use these stickers by clicking on the star icon in the whiteboard and entering in, you know, a speech bubble. Then they can resize it using the arrows down at the bottom and then use the drawing tools if they want to draw a character. Yeah, and then being able to enter text by either drawing it or using a text box they can create a whole comic pretty seamlessly that one's a lot of fun oh here comes that randomness widget again for this one we are spinning to practice poetry writing so if your students for, let's say, um, April is poetry, National Poetry Month here in the States, but you can spin if you're practicing and learning about different poetic types and having students write a poem based on the topic that's generated in the second wheel. I love the randomness spinner. There's so many things that you can do with it. All right, and then we have our planner. This one is a little bit also of a choice board. So we have our planner has the uh, one task with the instructions on it. But then if you come over here to the plus, the teacher has loaded in activities that the students can now choose from to add and to create a digital book report. So let's say they want to do a comic. Uh, they want to write, uh, let's see, a story timeline. 
uh, do a book versus movie. And then when they click on each of these tiles, it will open up into another widget for them to go explore and play with. Pretty cool as a way to differentiate instruction and also as a way to build in choice for your students. Okay, what else do we have? Let's see, for reading comprehension, we have quite a number of examples here. I'm gonna try to get through as many of our examples that we have to share with you. There are quite a lot. Uh, so if we don't get through all of them, don't worry. After the webinar has concluded, you will receive an email with links um, to the slide deck, and then you'll be able to go exploring all on your own and being able to click any of these to make a copy and add it to your account. So in this split worksheet, we have the questions are over here on the one side. And then on the other side, we have the text. So students can read along and as they're reading, they can answer the questions as they go. And just, just as I showed you before, be able to slide that center line over to make either the text bigger or the questions bigger. And we take a look at our question types we have here. Ooh, I love seeing images. So for those of your students who are still practicing their reading skills, you can build their capacity by using some iconography to um, get their uh, skill set built up. Here we have, you know, a true false with a grid question. You have putting things in order by dragging, dropping. So not only are they practicing their academic skills, we also have some fine tuning of their fine motor skills by being able to drag and drop and select things across. This is a categories question. Love seeing that. And then also a text question where they can practice typing in. Ooh, there's so many things to show you. All right, another way that we can take a look at reading comprehension is with this whiteboard widget. So here we have the background image has been loaded in, and now students can use the tools to fill in the information. This is pretty cute, a little pun on bookworm to fill in the information about the book that they just read. So another quick fun activity. Here we have this particular split whiteboard. Shows us uh, reading the questions. So, and then we want to use either the stickers that we have here. This is kind of fun, kind of a, a play on um, paper dolls. I don't know if anyone ever played with those before we had technology. Being able to use the stickers and reposition them. you know, to add hair, to add clothing, um, that you can create your characters. Uh, this is a real, another fun way to, um, to dress up the learning. Oh, here we go. Here's that math, uh, sorry, that map widget, um, a little bit different here for this one, instead of having auditory instructions on the one side, on the other with this maze, here we have the directions written out for us. So again, you can differentiate instruction by differentiating your widgets and accommodating your students accordingly. All right, and let's take a look at this pair matching widget. This uh, we're seeing, you know, being able to review students understanding of a story, you know, looking at um, here's each of these text boxes includes the uh, page from a particular story and then matching it up with the appropriate item. So this is that pair matching widget. And then if we take a look at some speaking exercises. On this split whiteboard, we have a video that they are to watch on one side and then using an 
audio recording question type. So if your students aren't yet able to use uh, the fine motor skills for typing and you know they still haven't built that um, physical skill set for themselves, you can have them use the audio recording question type where they will record themselves speaking uh, and answering whatever task you ask them to do. Here we have another video quiz. This is our latest widget, by the way. So this is great for like flipped learning. So where you have the teacher is giving some direct instruction in a video, and then when they get to particular question points, be able to answer the questions. And you can insert any of those 35 question types into a video quiz. Here's another randomness spinner. This one's kind of fun too for being able to work uh, collaboratively. So you can have students use this particular randomness um, spinner as part of group work for three or four people. They each take turns spinning the wheel and then they have to tell a story about the items that they um, have, have been revealed. So telling about fish in the bathroom is always unlucky. Hmm, that could make for an interesting tale. Ha <laughs> ha, tale. All right, we have the word search for practicing speaking skills. Wait, what? A word search for practicing speaking? Yeah. So here you can have students do, um, you know, kind of an icebreaker, get to know each other. So as they, you know, maybe uh, go meet with their neighbors, turn and talk to any other classmate, uh, when they have found the person's name, they can go meet with them or mark off that they have spoken to that person. So this is kind of an interesting way of doing a checklist, uh, but instead it's a word search to guide where you want them and who you want them to talk to. All right, so we're going to take a look next at the cross at the jigsaw puzzle here. And in another way that you can use this jigsaw puzzle is have them, you know, solve the puzzle individually, but then they need to turn and talk to their neighbor and talk about what was the picture that was revealed. So you're doing two things here. You're working their fine motor skills as well as their, you know, ability to recognize and um, move the pieces to create that whole image, but then they're also working on their speaking skills to talk about the image that was revealed. All right, here we have a hotspot image. Whoops, sorry. Let's go back. Hotspot. In this particular hotspot, we're learning about the vowels and the consonants. And when they click on any of these tiles, it will pop up with a video that will show pronunciation. So um, as your students are you know, working in speech or if they have to learn a specific sound, this is a, a great way to practice that type of thing and to let them acquire that information. Okay, let's continue on. That was a lot for languages. As I said, uh, we have so many examples to go through. We even have some grammar practice and some vocab practice. So just want to show off a couple of these. So one thing I want to point out for those of you that are new to book widgets is that the worksheet and the quiz worksheet quiz widgets are very similar. Both you can have the same types of questions, but whereas in a worksheet that you are scrolling in a quiz, you are only going to see one question at a time. So this is good for if you want to, you know, do a traditional quiz where you're assessing their understanding. But it's also great for students who may get distracted easily or who need some a little bit more accommodation with focusing that they only have to pay attention to the question that's in front of them. And you don't have to worry about scrolling down the page. 
All right, let's see. I haven't shown you a memory widget yet. How to use a memory widget for grammar practice. Well, let's see. Click on the tile and then being able to find the corresponding name. Hmm. We might be here a while. So I'm going to head back to this, uh, our selection here. All right, for vocabulary practice, we absolutely have those note cards that you could use. And being able to embed an image with words is fantastic. Here we're practicing various idioms. So we're seeing the image and then what does this mean? You have the definition on the other side. So you can study it, but then you can also practice. And then you can mark for yourself if you got it wrong or correct as you were practicing as well as time yourself. Um, so this is a great way for self-assessment and to check your own understanding as you're practicing. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to show you the crossword puzzle here for vocab. So just as we have a crossword puzzle question type, we also have a widget dedicated specifically to crosswords. And when you click on whether it's across or down, you'll see that when you are looking at the word or the clue, you'll see that it's course it's highlighted uh, to correspond. So this way you always know where, which question or which topic you're looking at, which number, and then seeing what you have um, there. Okay. All right, and let's head back. I know there's so many examples to take a look at here. So many different ways that you can help your students acquire their information, practice the skills needed for success. All right, let's dig into some math widgets. What? Math? Yes. Here we go. So for some math practice, here is a worksheet. So remember worksheets, you can scroll down. And this particular one is very focused on, you know, some great picture matching here. So we're doing here. I have some numbers. I have some images and I'm counting what they are. Three. I'm going to drag this over because I have three crayons. And then look, my numbers have decreased up top. So we have this word bank to help build their capacity and make it easier. This one's really interesting when you take a look at how you have um, some design options to make it visually appealing for your students. All right, let's take a look at another worksheet. This is also by one of our book widget users. So we have some math practice here, structured ground play, which ground plan fits the following structure. Interesting how they've embedded questions and or pictures with pictures, multiple choice. Great way to practice those skills. Okay, taking a look at a split whiteboard. Here we have the math question off onto the side. So I know this this particular one will look pretty um, advanced for some elementary age students with um, having uh, you know to see and read all of these words. But what I want you to get an idea about is this ability to have them read some information or view or listen to some information and then demonstrate their understanding by drawing or plotting points and that your whiteboard on the other side doesn't have to just be like a white screen a white board it can be a graph where you can have them practice marking their points and let's say um annotating a diagram 
All right, we have so many widgets to get through and take a look at. There's so many different examples. Let's take a look at a video quiz here for math. Continue to video. Kind of fun. And then uh, same thing, being able to go to all of these different question types that you have to check your understanding. And also think too, ways that you can incorporate emojis into your questions and your answer choices. That's another way to build visual interest into the tasks that you would like your students to do. And here's a whiteboard question. So again, we just as we have a whiteboard widget, we also have a whiteboard question. So here's that whiteboard where students can, you know, draw, use the tools to answer the question and show their work. All right. Let's take a look at, wait, note cards for math class? Let's go take a look at this one. What? So this is cool. Here we are looking at some geometric shapes and being able to learn what the names of the shapes are. So again, blending picture with words. And this is a great way for them to practice acquiring technical terminology in math class. All right, let's take a look at one of my favorite widgets is the hotspot. I know, okay, so I said it. I just, they're all my favorite. Here, this one we have, um, sound is embedded into the hotspot. So if you are wrong, you will hear that sound. And if you are right, you'll hear that sound. Okay. So what we're going to do is click on a shape to identify it. I'm right. I'm right again. Oh, I'm wrong. But this is a fun way to create a practice activity. So, you know, students don't have to worry about, you know, grades or, you know, did they get their points correct or not? This is great as um, gamifying to be able to have your students practice and then get a sound to signify correctness or not. Okay, I think that was pretty good for math. Uh, let's take a look. Let me show you though, the arithmetic widget because that one is built specifically for math classes. So in this one, you're going to solve the exercises, press the question mark to fill your answer. Okay. So we have, oh, geez, Louise, let's skip this one. 40, 14 divided by seven. I think I can do that one. I click on the question mark and here comes this number. Am I right? Yay, I'm all right. And then as I complete each of these um, problems, and if I am correct, if you'll notice over here on the side, every correct answer is going to give me a new letter. Oh, I'm wrong, but it lets me try again. And let's see, whoops. Am I right? Yes. And what it's going to do is spell out a word for feedback, you know, a great reward word. Uh, so I know what word will appear here, but if you'd like to see what that reward word is, you can go ahead and play with this particular widget to see how wonderful you are. All right, moving along to science, we have biology class. Now, again, if the topic seems a little advanced for elementary school for you, what I want you to do is think about how you can repurpose this, take this idea and use it with your own students. So here we have some stickers with organs, and then I'm going to grab it and bring it here and place it to where I think it should be. I can make it bigger or smaller, move it around. And then I can, you know, learn about the parts of the body, the organs with a whiteboard and corresponding stickers in the whiteboard. That's pretty fun. Here we have a quiz for biology. 
This one again, remember quizzes are gonna give you one question type at a time. So you'll use the arrows down at the bottom to navigate to the next question. And this is a grouping question where we have images such as the wolf here. We have audio. That's pretty cool. And then we have text. So what you do then is you group the items together. And then um, you'll get feedback on whether or not you're correct or not. I know that wolves are not in the savanna of Africa. So I'm gonna pull this out and see how easy that is just to go, whoops. I'm gonna move it to where I think it should go and then can group the rest of them accordingly. So this question type is really useful uh, and that you can mix some different media and getting students to categorize items together. And then you can submit to review your answers and get some feedback. Okay, we have, here's a mind map widget, which I haven't shown any examples for that yet. So let's take a look at this. So you're going to create a mind map with everything you know about the forest. Click on the plus sign in the upper corner to add new words. You can also connect boxes by dragging them and being invisible. So we have the forest plus, let's say, trees. And then being able to change colors. I can make it a new color. I can move it around. I can also connect that to this one. Uh, and can do some like mind mapping uh, to either brainstorm and just show everything I know about a particular topic. So mind map is pretty fun, no matter if it's biology or any other topic. Okay, so that's just a few examples here for science. We're going to move along to geography. And again, you'll have plenty of time to be able to explore these after the webinar with um, navigating to the slides and being able to play with them. So here we have this particular um, widget is assessing the moon phases. So here we have the diagram. And then what we're going to do is grab the image and move it to where we think it would go. Really interesting mixing images with images and drag and drop. Okay. Let's take a look at a split worksheet for geography. Same thing as we've seen before questions on one side in this split worksheet, as well as some different question types and the text on the other side. And we've embedded an image to go with the text. You notice the background image is also a different color. The questions are in white, whereas the text is in black and the whole background is an orange color. You know, this helps to anchor the eye and as well as differentiate between the questions and the text. But if you notice in all the split worksheets I've shown you, they've all been unique. So while we're all using the same widget, you can customize the design to make it fit the needs of your students, as well as, um, you know, just giving them some visual interest. All right, here we have another uh, whiteboard widget with a background image and some directions for marking up and annotating the image. So being able to draw directly on the image itself can be really useful uh, for labeling parts of a diagram or a map in this case. Okay, let's take a look at some chemistry or physics examples. We have, there's that video quiz, great for flipped learning. And, you know, as students watch the video, it'll take them to the different question points where you can assess 
their understanding. So here we have, again, we're using the same widget. I've shown you a few different video quizzes so far, and each one has been unique with its background color um, and you know fonts being uh, chosen by the teacher creating them. And we'll do one last look over here at the chemistry and physics widgets with a note card widget. So here we have some note cards where they can practice, but also noticing some little bit of customizing. So not only can you do study or practice, but building in some choice for the students and how they would like to study or practice by letting them choose if they wanna see the front of the card first or the back first. This is pretty simple, but by building in choice in these simple ways, you're really helping to build students' capacity, uh, build their social emotional learning skills so that they're practicing, you know, self uh, assessment, self awareness, uh, responsible decision making in easy to do ways. All right, I want to show you some history widgets. So we haven't taken a look at a timeline widget yet. So let me open up this one. So here we have the different tiles. Um, and students can, you know, read the information on the tiles to learn some in info, but then they can also click on the text box and start typing. So they could type inside some of these and being able to add uh, additional information to the timeline cards. So another way that you can check their understanding and have them show what they know. Here we have another worksheet. Again, worksheets let you scroll down through and we have a number of question types here. So we have a whiteboard question where they can color or highlight on the map that's provided, the image that's the background image here. I have a typing question, we have an embedded video so this one's a little bit different than the video quiz because this they're able to watch the whole video and then answer some questions pertaining to the video um, as opposed to having the video stop in specific parts. So just, just some different ways that I want you to get inspired to think about how you can use some different multimedia, whether it's images or text to um, get your students learning. Oh, uh, let me show you a before and after picture. So here we have a before and after in the center line here. They will drag this and move this over to reveal some more information or to reveal a processy. Maybe you're going to do some comparisons. In this particular case, it's showing the evolution as a diagram for students to explore and to focus on different aspects of how humans have evolved. Okay, moving right along, art and music. Ooh, so we've shown you some whiteboard widgets in different subject areas. Let's take a look at one for art class. So here we have the ability on this one where students can input their own picture on this side so they can use if you notice there's the camera icon in the toolbar here down at the bottom so they could import a picture from their device that they're using take a picture if they're using an ipad or a phone pull one in from their computer and then on the opposite side they're going to use the tools to do some artwork and to draw on the whiteboard. Creative way to practice self portraits or just doing a picture of anything and doing some artwork about it on the other side. Here we have a split whiteboard. Ah, so we saw with the emoji and the random um, spinner that we used previously in the languages category. Now we can use this instead of writing a story, we can have students create a drawing 
a piece of artwork on the other side of the whiteboard. So, so many uses, as I said, for that randomness widget where you can use it for stories, art, lots of uses. And embedding the randomness widget inside of another widget is a great way to make use of it. Okay, let's take a look at a checklist widget. So these are great for having students work through a process or you want to give them a checklist of items to go through. But with step by step instructions, you can have them in this case create an origami paper boat, they can read the instructions, check the box that they've done it, and then if you've noticed. It makes the item that they've completed is kind of grayed out so they can always stay up to date on where they are in their process simple way to help students navigate through steps of a project or any tasks you'd like them to create. Ooh, music class let's take a look at the piano widget what yeah. So this is fun. We have the music up on the top and then we have the keyboard down here at the bottom. Wow, this is fun. So now students could practice what recognizing what the notes are and where it's located on the piano keys now obviously they're not going to practice appropriate finger position for those of you that do play piano this is a great way to get students acclimated and then they can also click we have the audio file embedded in pretty cool and it's going to keep playing <laughs> I guess we're going to hear the whole song through. <laughs> okay, let me close that tab and we'll get back to our widgets. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that musical interlude. Okay, so let's take a look at some different projects. So I've mentioned before the checklist about being able to help students navigate through a process. Well, what if you want to do a bigger, longer extended project with them? We have quite a few options for you there. One is to use a planner widget. In this particular example, it's a math one. So here students can go through and do some kind of a bit of a choice board where it will let them say arithmetic level one they'll click on the tile it will take them to a new activity where they can practice and just give it a second to load oh my internets are being a little slow so let me go back Okay, that's being a little bit slow to load for that particular one. Let's try the second example. And here is that book report that I showed you before. So again, using the planner widget, whether you're giving them some predefined tasks or letting them choose the tasks from the side is a great way to help them go through the steps of a project and to practice and not procrastinate. We also have some uh, examples here of a web quest widget. So in the web quest, you'll see for this particular one that the um, activities are organized into tabs, which are down here at the bottom of my screen. And let's say on the first page here, we have a before and after to help the Easter bunny. And then you would navigate to the different tabs to see what the next activity is. So again, thinking about how you can organize and um, package the material for your students is um, a really interesting 
Ready to do it with a web quest. Okay, we have some additional examples that you can take a look at here too. And when it comes to exit tickets, we have quite a few here. So we have an exit slip widget. Let's take a look at one example. So for the exit slip widget, it asks them, did you understand today's lesson? And then gives them a question to answer and then they can submit it. So there's a great way and quick way to do exit tickets uh, or to just do a real quick check for understanding as you transition to the next component of your lesson. So we have um, one more exit slip to take a look at. So you can see here, here's that same question. Did you understand today's lesson with the smiley faces? And then a question that this teacher will enter in that is topic specific. So you can change the designs here uh, as we have seen that the background image or color is a little bit different, uh, but we also have some similarities in, you know, at least um, the types of questions we want them to answer. You could also use other widgets for exit tickets. So a worksheet could be great for a exit ticket where you're just asking them Ah, in three, two, one, what are three things you learned today? Two things you've wanted to learn more about and one question about the lesson. So um, if you have, let's say, anything you'd like to share in the chat, three things you learned today, two things you wanna know more about, one question about today's webinar, you can drop it into the chat and we'll take a look uh, in just a bit. You could also use a whiteboard widget for an exit ticket. Same thing, we have stop slow, ready to go, uh, that they could color on the traffic light to indicate if um, they are struggling or need more assistance. So another quick way that you can assess student learning and allow them to advocate for themselves uh, if they need additional help. Okay, so now I've shown you so many different examples of various widgets that you can use for various subject types. Now I want to show you, just give you an overview of the various ways that you can meet the needs of your learners with options to customize those activities. So just kind of review some of the things I've mentioned as we've taken a look at the various widgets. So when it comes to the options inside of book widgets, you can select your text so that screen readers could read selected text aloud. This is great for your students who are learning to read and need that additional support. You have the turn on the text to speech feature also so that the built in browser voice will read aloud to the students. You can turn on spell check to assist with their writing uh, capabilities that they will be able to check the language of the browser that the students using. So even if you're not using English or if you're using Spanish, any of the languages that are available inside of book widgets, you'll be able to enable that feature. You can give students a simple or scientific calculator for math class that and science that it's really useful to help uh, their calculations that they don't have to go find a calculator it's built into book widgets. And then having students not just type their answers but recording their questions and using audio so whether it's you the teacher who's recording audio to read to the students with your own voice, you also have those question types where the students could um, record their answers by speaking. With our exam mode, you can give students more time. So exam mode just means that it's putting a time limit on uh, the widget that you want them to take. Again, I mentioned about emojis, but you can use emojis or just simplified language for students so uh, that you're not overwhelming them with too much um, text or complicated language. And you can also switch to rich text to adjust font and font size as you're writing your questions. And in design, so remember when you go to preview, when you've made your widget and you click on design, it'll open up that side panel where you can customize certain parts of your widget 
to make everything more clear for them. You can change the background color, you can adjust the font size, even select some different fonts to use. And great for differentiating instruction and for helping us work smarter, not harder, is being able to duplicate a widget that's already been created. So duplicate a widget from a master template. You know, you create the activity once and then you duplicate it multiple times to create different versions that fit the needs of your diverse population. So that duplication is fabulous. And again, you saw in the corner of those various widgets I showed that there was the green make a copy. That's the duplication. All the widgets we shared with you today you'll be able to click that button and add them into your own account. Okay, so some other options to think about when you want to differentiate your instruction for your learners, I encourage you to think about the different question types and to use them according to the level of difficulty. So, I mean, for example, you could choose from a fill in the blank exercises or use a drag words into a sentence question. Uh, you know, you're still getting them to uh, you know, see the answer, but it's just the way that you want them to enter it in. By choosing a different question type, you can adjust the difficulty level accordingly. Also, use audio and video. Really intentionally put the opportunity in, whether it's your voice or other sounds that they can hear as well as your video or some, you know, a video that you have found for instruction. This will really help students to be able to acquire that information as well as build their uh, self awareness skills and their self reflection. Why? Because when they have the power, and this is so simple, just that power to click play and pause when they need to that is a foundational skill for making responsible decisions later on and for assess self-assessing their own learning because if they say oh i missed that let me rewind and re-watch or re-listen that's a really powerful skill for students and something that's obviously going to build to what they can do in the future okay so we have all of those question types. So you have text, images, and audio that I've mentioned before. So obviously for your primary grades, text is gonna be a bit more difficult if they're emerging readers and writers. Images will be a little bit easier and auditory will probably be easiest for them. Now, when it comes to sharing widgets with your students, you want to have the ability to share with every student as well as with just a few. So when we take a look at sharing with every student, you can, in primary education, use a QR code. They, if they're using iPads in the classroom, they can scan the code and navigate to it. You also have the short code where you can navigate to, let me show you what this looks like. When you go to bookwidgets.com forward slash play, the short code for your widget can be entered in here. The students click start and it will take them directly to the widget you want them to do. So if you're not using a learning management system like, you know, the upper grades, secondary education may be using the short code or QR code or sharing a link with your students is an easy way to get them to where you need them to be. And when it comes to sharing with selected students, if you're using Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams, uh, this uh, slide in particular outlines the steps for being able to select individual um, students that you want to send to. So if you don't want to send it to uh, the whole class in just a smaller group, these steps are here for you to take a look at. Okay, so we're coming towards the end here and just some um, other resources that we would like to point out to you. In addition to all of the widgets examples that i've shown you today, there is even more that you can go find one is in book widgets itself, if you uh, go to book widgets you go to my widgets. 
go down to the bottom of the section there and look for my groups you can discover the book widgets blog group where every widget we've created for the blog is located in there and the primary education group is another one where we'll be able to see so many different examples from our book widgets community members and also get inspired with the uh, links that we have here to various blog posts to help you out. And as we're coming to a conclusion here, some handy links and resources. If you ever encounter any trouble, you can always reach us uh, if you have a question at support at bookwidgets.com. We also have our webinars page where you can view any of the web webinars that we have um, previously presented as well as sign up for some upcoming ones next week we'll be taking a look at the exam uh, how to use book widgets for exams and we have some links here for tutorials our knowledge base and you can stay connected to the greater book widgets community uh, by joining our facebook group teaching with book widgets as well as visit the blog and that group so all of those links are there for you.